It is extremely unfortunate that my brief departure from YouTube and live streaming happened to coincide with one of the largest the wars of the 21st century beginning. Uh, but we're back on it now, okay? If you've been following my commentary so far, then you probably share, or at least are aware of, my belief that Russia's opening in the invasion of Ukraine has been really, really bad. From the outset of the conflict, I fully expected Ukraine to fall. I think I still do, but Russia is Russia is making an effort to prove me wrong on that one. We have seen every imaginable logistic failing. I mean, we've we've seen the quality of equipment being put through. Uh, Russia just dwindling and dwindling to the point where now it seems that, and this isn't a joke, an armored train is being used to ship equipment over. I imagine not all the way into Ukraine because Ukraine destroyed those lines a while ago, but wow. Um, just so you guys know, in terms of like operational effectiveness, an armored train is up there with Russia deploying biplanes and zeppelins. Armored trains are not relevant. <laughs> I don't think they ever were really as cool as they are. And they're very cool. Um, they are not cutting edge modern warfare for reasons you can probably imagine if you think about how you might defend against an armored train that has to run along one track and can't turn. <laughs> There's more to it than that, too. Um, not just the armored train. It's just like every day, like 60 or 70 new really funny things happen. I mean, like, for example, just yesterday. Russia lost a major general, um, Vitaly Gerasimov. Now, this is not the other Gerasimov, um, who has a similar first name, and he's responsible for a whole war doctrine. This guy was a war criminal, as, you know, uh, many, I imagine, Russian and, you know, American <laughs> military leaders are. Um, but anyway, uh, big POS, not great, got killed in Kharkov. And I was thinking, looking into this, why Kharkov? Why is a major general in Ukraine, you know? It's not the 1600s. It's it, like these aren't like we have we have equipment like communications equipment. And I'm pretty sure the reason why the major general was there and got killed uh, was because the communication lines for Russian uh, invasion forces were leaked publicly a long time ago. Well, not long time ago, but recently, um, meaning that comms are jammed and they have to get in close to relay orders. So poor logistics are actually getting. Russia's brass killed. That's really embarrassing. That's really bad for Russia. I mean, a major general. Can you imagine? Like people are pl like people are jamming Russian lines right now with like uh like uh anime music. You know, they're they're just absolutely bapping the FMAB soundtrack. And uh, as a response, Russia has to send its generals to within a couple of miles of the shifting lines of control. God. Apparently, the word that he'd been killed had to be sent back via like a, like a, a note card or something. Like they didn't even have the communication equipment necessary to send a proper death report. They had to do some other. It's like a whole thing. It's it's a whole thing, man. I, I it's <sighs> whatever. The actual thing I wanted to talk about here is that um, the invasion continues to ramp up. Sanctions continue to heavy, uh, you know, weigh heavily on Russia. Russia still hasn't reopened their stock exchange meaning that they are um, delaying the inevitable when it comes to the absolute ruination of their economy. I look forward to seeing how that pans out for them and only delay this for so long. They're trying to prevent money from leaving the country. I don't know how effective this is going to be. And there's a lot of internal resistance within Russia. Um, there's a nice Twitter thread here with a list of Russian celebrities who have spoken out against the conflict, the most notable of with, uh, which is opened here. Um, Russia's uh, Ivan Urgant, uh, came out against the invasion of Ukraine, and apparently, according to some sources, and I looked this up on Wikipedia, apparently the network that hosts him hasn't confirmed it, but several sources have said that his show got canceled. And this guy's, as, as far as I can tell, pretty big in Russia, too. I mean, you know, obviously Russia being a an autocracy, um, everything is controlled by the state. You know, if you speak out against the state, they can do whatever they can, they can get you. Um, there are a good number of, of celebrities who've spoken out against this, which is great. It's really, really good, actually. Remember, Putin is not beholden to the people, but 
he is beholden, at least in part, to his oligarchs and to the structural stability of his economy and basic political operations. I mean, you know, just because you don't care about the democratic will of your people doesn't mean that agitation from your people isn't completely irrelevant. After all, you know, even kings and queens had to keep revolutions and unrest in sort. Um, and all of this stuff, I, I think, speaks to what I've been saying, which is that, I mean, the Russian people don't want this either, you know? Putin enjoys a good deal of support within Russia, but I think there's a difference between, you know, a population conditioned by state-controlled media to love their autocratic leader and people's, like, real affirmative support of a war where their children are being conscripted and being sent to die for nothing. Um, and now things have ramped up significantly with respect to that. Uh, for example, a video came out, and this is illegal in Russia, by the way. The police are not allowed to do this. In Moscow, stopping people, demanding to see their phones, and reading their messages. And, and they wouldn't let them go till they did so, uh, according, according to journalistic reports in there. That is wild. I mean, just imagine, like, any of these people, you know, if they're sympathetic to the Ukrainian cause or they condemn the war. I mean, a police officer forcing you to just sit there and my God, these are pretty militarized police too, aren't they? Look at that. They're, they're ready for a conflict. Um, absolutely terrifying stuff, you know. And this is because, you know, Putin, the government, it, it fears the people right now. This is being done because they fear the people. They're cracking down harder and harder, you know. Um, over 13,000 anti-war protesters have been arrested. At this point, the number is probably quite a bit higher because this is... Uh, um, uh, I think this this uses data that ended from the end of the other day, and we've been getting thousands report like r arrested every single day, which is unbelievable. Um, it actually goes further than this, if you can believe it. Now, this isn't going to go through because this is insane, but um, uh, the State Duma proposed conscription for anti-war protesters. I want you to envision this for a second. First, from a moral perspective mass arresting anti-war protesters and then sending them to the front lines, presumably to die. Morally, this is indefensible. Of course, it's exactly what all the tankies and so-called lefties, so-called anti-imperialists, you know, would be defending if it actually went through, um, if they got the chance to, but indefensible nonetheless. Second of all, imagine this from like a logistical perspective, like Russia's war is already going really badly for them. Hey, here's 10,000 new conscripts, comrade. Um, I'm sure they won't hamper the operation in any way. Hey, Sergey, why is this ammo depot that we sent these new uh, conscripts to go defend now on fire? You know, what What happened to all the the treads on these tanks? I can't imagine. We, we, we trusted these anti-war protesters to participate in such good faith. They are scared. Um, and the, the, the fright that they're experiencing, I think, is best demonstrated by the fact that they're cracking down harder than ever on, uh, you know, dissident speech. Uh, I mean, look, even this New York Times article agrees with me. Um, blocking access to Facebook and major foreign news outlets. Yeah, uh, so in Russia, they're blocking access to a ton of internet stuff for the same reason China does, you know, like... Uh, you know, they don't want people going out there looking up Tiananmen Square, and Russia doesn't want people going on Twitter right now because Twitter is a nonstop cavalcade of pro-Ukrainian sentiment and also video footage of Russians getting their asses kicked and having really, really poor war operative, uh, you know, capabilities. So I, I, I kind of get that. Also, spreading false information about the invasion of Ukraine uh, is now punishable with up to 15 years in prison. Now, um, I'll leave you to uh, weigh in on what false information is according to the Russian government concerning this particular operation, considering they don't even call it an invasion. They call it a special military operation to defend the people of the Luhansk and uh, Donetsk regions. Yeah, you, you, you get it, you know. Um, it's 1984 over there, folks. The meme has become reality. Uh, a full-on police stopping you in the streets, uh, you know, media uh, personalities going, like, their, their shows going dark when they criticize the government, uh, tens of thousands of war protesters being arrested, uh, all, you know, anti-state info being cracked down on. Um, please understand, and I, un I, I, I know it's, it's difficult to remember this, but the Russian people have been 
I can't do anything in this house. I can't do, I can't do anything. You know, you want to be here with me for the conclusion, huh? You want to weigh in? Your, your tremendous. You know, with cats this cute, it's a miracle I find time to live stream at all instead of just, you know, papping them. Like, look at this. I could just stare at him all day. Just remember, the people of Russia have long been the most enduring victims of Putin's regime, you know? Not to say Ukraine hasn't also. They have. Just keep in mind, there are a lot of victims in this situation. And I would like to reaffirm my call for, after all this is said and done, if Russia is effectively neutered, uh, for the powers of that be in the West to unite and to provide massive uh, economic assistance to the people of Russia. Um, because even though these sanctions are necessary now, uh, the people of Russia should not be made to feel their effects one second longer than is necessary to stop the Russian war machine. And I, um, I really hope they can move past this and live free, fulfilling lives, because they are victims of their regime, too. Um, anyway, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm live streaming, I think, tomorrow, and um, I'm hoping to do a fundraiser, uh, play an Elden Ring, like 24 hours for uh, Ukrainian refugees. I still haven't chosen the charity. I'll try to find one that's safe and reliable, uh, and we'll... Uh, We'll see if we can't uh, get it done. Um, anyway, love you guys. I'll see you soon. And I love you too. Oh my god. Wow, you're so big and squishy. Mm. Uh, I guess I'll hit the stop recording button.